Hello, everyone. My name is TJ Hillstock with the National Sports Media Association. And today I'm with the 2022 Sports Writer of the Year, Bill Shake It. Hi. <laughs> All right. So my first question for you is, what does receiving this award mean to you? Uh, it's really an incredible honor. California is such a huge state and there's so many teams that play in our state and so many great stories to cover and so many outstanding reporters that cover those stories. So really humbling and, like I said, a tremendous honor. Right. Right. So what was your first job in the business? How did you get started? Well, I learned at a sadly young age, I was not going to be a shortstop for the Dodgers when I grew up. When I went to college, I actually wanted to go into radio. Uh, like a lot of people in LA, I grew up listening mm -hmm. to Vince Scully and thought, you know, hey, I could do that. Not nearly as well, but at least I could try. Um, so that's what I did in college mostly. And when I get out of college, I thought, oh, I'll just get a job doing baseball play-by-play -play now. And I couldn't get a job doing baseball play-by-play. <laughs> Uh, but I could get a job covering high school sports for a newspaper in the San Francisco Bay Area. It was called the Contra Costa Times. And as so many of us do, uh, high school football, high school softball, high school baseball, high school track, whatever happens to be in season. And you learn so much about covering games and writing good stories in a very quick and timely manner and make connections, as, again, so many of us have done. Uh, to try to get jobs as you move up along the way in your career. Right. So my next question for you is actually, so how do you work from there to where you are now? What path did you take? Well, as much as I would love to be able to say, you know, I went to a great journalism school and that led to my first job and all that. Um, none of that happened. Um, journalism school is great. I'm not knocking it, but Nobody has ever asked me when I've applied for a job, where did you go to college? They just want to see if you can do the job. So if you're a writer, they want to see some examples of stories you've written. If you're a broadcaster, I'm sure they want to see what they call you real. But um, it isn't really an example of anything except getting a good job and getting some connections and working your way up. So I was able to move from that first high school job because somebody at that newspaper knew that I was interested in baseball and said, hey, I hear the wire services are looking somebody cover baseball here. Are you interested? Sure. Okay, so that was that job. And then two years later, there was a newspaper in a city called Riverside here in Southern California that was looking for somebody to cover baseball. And now all of a sudden, I've got experience covering baseball. Great, got that job. That led to a job covering the same team for a different newspaper in this market. And that led to the job I have now at the LA Times. Wow. All right. So I know you talked about Mr. Scully, someone you, you looked up to. Who else do you look up to in terms of other sports writers and broadcasters? Um, it's a great question. Uh, I was very, very fortunate, beyond fortunate, actually blessed to get to know Vin Scully um, as I grew older and got to cover the Dodgers and what a, a wonderful man he was. Um, I don't think there's any question he was the best baseball broadcaster ever. Um, I know there are folks in you know St. Louis and Pittsburgh and Detroit that will argue for their guys and and with great passion, but I think he was the best. Um, I did grow up listening to a guy named Jim Healy on the radio here in Los Angeles who had a nightly sports show. It was only 15 minutes. It wasn't sports talk where he had callers. It was just a guy who was really plugged into all the teams in this town and knew what was going on. And that's where you learned a lot about sports. You didn't read it in the paper. You didn't see it on TV. You learned it on the radio from 15 minutes of this guy who just called everybody. So it's a great example of, you know, whether you're on the radio or you're writing for the newspaper, or you're on television, reporting helps, working helps. Nobody just, you know, wants to hear opinions because if you don't know what you're basing your opinions on, who cares, right? So go out and make some calls and find out what's going on. And then at the LA Times, I've been super fortunate. I didn't know him really well because his career was uh, wrapping up as I got started. But Jim Murray, who was one of the best sports writers ever in American history, um, was finishing up his career when I got started. And mm -hmm. I knew him more as somebody I read growing up than as a colleague. But he was terrific. And uh, now Bill Plaschke, who is getting honored as National Sports Writer of the Year this year, which is wonderful, um, just Tremendous teammate, tremendous person, 
and tremendous guy. Um, there aren't too many people I can think of who can go from analyzing what the Lakers did last night to going up. There's a town called Paradise in Northern California that was destroyed by a fire and spending time with their high school team and getting to know the stories of all those players and how they completed their first season after a fire had destroyed their town, destroyed the homes of a lot of these players, destroyed the stores where a lot of their parents work. And to be able to turn from one to the other on a dime and to do it equally well, uh, he's the best in my book. And obviously uh, he's getting the honor. So he's the best in a lot of people's books. Right. So my last question for you is what advice would you give college and high school students trying to become sports writers and just be in the sports media? As the old Nike ad said, just do it. Um, you can go to journalism school if you want. You can probably make some connections there. You'll certainly have some good experiences. But the prices of colleges these days, not just journalism, but in everything, have gotten so high that it's not worth coming out with a lot of debt because, unfortunately for all of us, uh, journalism jobs are not Wall Street jobs in terms of the amounts they pay. So if you're coming out of school with a lot of debt and you're getting a low-paying job to start, it's probably not a great combination. And as I said, people that are hiring don't really care where you went to college unless they want to, you know, oh, how's your football team doing? But what they really want to know is, can you do the job? So now yeah. we're fortunate in the internet era where, you know, you don't have to just go to your local newspaper. There's many outlets. You can start your own blog. You can find other fan sites to write for, but you can get all sorts of experience writing. So that's the number one thing. And number two is get some experience reporting, asking questions. There's a million people out there who can sit and do a story on why the Lakers lost last night. Okay, right. great. What we want is insight and analysis you don't get anywhere else. That's what makes for a story people want to read. And ultimately, if people are reading our stories, we're out of business. So you want to get right. to learn. Go be around. You don't have to do it necessarily at a professional level, but if you're in a market with a good high school team, spend some time around the team, get to know the coaches, get to know the players. That's the exact same thing anybody does covering the Lakers or the Dodgers or any other team. It's just on a different level, but the skills are the same. So that when you get the chance to cover the Lakers or the Dodgers or whoever, you know what it's like to go up to somebody and ask them a question and maybe make it a little uncomfortable because they lost, but that's your job to ask the question. And to try to be able to share with your readers or your listeners or your viewers why something happened and what it means. It isn't enough to say, this is what happened last night. It is good to say, here's why that happened and here's what's going to change over the next game. Right. All right. Well, that is my last question for you, Mr. Bill. Uh, thank you for All talking right. with us today.